Hello and welcome to the walkthrough of the Monsoon Marketplace software. Uh, today we're going to be covering some of the core elements of the software. So if you want to go into more detail beyond what we discussed today, uh, please contact the Monsoon Sales Department and one of our people would be happy to take you through a more advanced demonstration of the software um, and a little bit more applicable to your specific business. Please keep in mind that today we're going to be going through the software in training mode. Um, all that really means is that this is a sandbox environment so any customer information or market credentials, anything along that line is fictitious. It is made up just for this sandbox. Uh, the agenda for today is we're going to start by talking a little bit about the settings within the software so you can see some of the uh, core elements of configuration. Uh, we'll then slide over into the management of inventory, uh, bringing inventory into the system, uh, both into local inventory and managing fulfilled by Amazon. And we'll talk a little bit about how orders can be managed and fulfilled as well. There's a series of tabs across the top of the software, uh, so that's how we do our navigation. And we're going to go ahead and start within the settings tab. First thing you'll notice is on the left side, there are three primary silos or three primary buckets of where configurations can take place. There's going to be the marketplaces themselves on where you can choose to list your product and the rules around that. There's going to be rules that govern your pricing engine, uh, which is a dynamic engine. And everything else will fall under the My Company moniker. Uh, which is going to include everything from users and passwords to addresses and an element that we call classifications. Uh, while mentioning classifications, let's talk about that first. Uh, this can be an important element when you're dealing with listings and pricing rules. Uh, two primary types of classifications. There is a standard variety, which is simply setting a user-defined grouping, and that allows you to set rules um, as, those, as, as those need to be adhered to specific parts of your inventory. Um, it could be vendor codes, it could be really anything you'd like. Uh, the more common application of these, however, is within a smart classification. What we do in here is we can actually use information that we can pull from the Amazon catalog or other places of information. And you can see the list is fairly exhaustive. In this particular case, what I've done is I've set it to handle any products that are between one and two pounds, so this is a weight designation. The way that those things are mostly going to be applied will slide down into our pricing engine is the way the pricing is, is managed is we do everything through an inventory group. So as you notice here, if I right click, I can alter priorities within my various groups. Uh, there's always a default, so there's, everything can have a specific pricing rule. But the way that we manage this is you can simply pull up and edit or create a new group. You'll notice up here in the add inventory group, I can create new ones. And I can use any piece of information around my products. So whether it's a category on the market, whether it's a fulfillment type of local versus FBA, um, age is going to designate how long it's been since an item is sold, and we can use any of those classifications we discussed as well. So essentially what's going to happen in these cases is the software, anytime a job is being run, whether it's a new item being added to the mix or a repricing happening, the software is going to determine which is the highest priority best matching group for that particular item, and then that will set a pricing strategy towards it. Pricing strategies are comprised of four primary components. There's going to be the strategy itself, which is determining position. I'll get to more of that in just a moment. There's going to be determination of a price floor, which is going to be consisted of either just simply a cost of goods to determine a minimum, or it can be calculated through um, other mechanisms with percentages and dollar figures. There's going to be price ceilings, and then there's going to be default prices. Uh, price ceilings just simply makes it so that no one can take you out of the market, and default price is utilized when there's nobody listing, so at least we can set a price point. More importantly, when we're dealing with minimums, a couple different things can happen here. If you're selling an item where you don't have a specific cost of goods, a good example would be someone who's selling a you know, truckload of used books that they brought into their warehouse. They may just set a specific cost of goods on an item. We'll go ahead here and we'll put this at 50 cents. And that's just going to mean that no item will be able to sell below 50 cents. The other way to do it is anything that's done at an item level is going to override anything that's done here in these group levels at what we're looking at today. So if you have a specific cost of goods on each product, that is what value we'll use as the baseline. And the software will add a percentage, what we have deemed as profit, and a floor modifier, which is a dollar figure, in order to inflate that and determine your, your floor. In this particular case on Amazon for consumer electronics, typical percentage is going to be 8%. So I've set my profit at 12% to make sure I've got a little bit of margin myself. And this is an item you'll see that I'm doing fulfilled by Amazon. So I've also added $3.04 because my item is between one and two pounds and I know I need to cover my FBA fees. 
this will set my floor. I won't go below that. Beyond that, as long as it is above my floor, my strategy is going to apply. Within the strategies themselves, there's really two primary components. There's going to be a custom strategy, and then there is a specific buy box strategy. Custom strategies are simply looking at a position of a product. So let's go in here as, a, as an example. I'm matching the lowest. You'll see I can match the lowest price. I can be an average of sellers. I can be above. I can be below. A lot of controls I can put in. I can also limit who I want to consider within my, within my pricing strategies, um, including based on feedback, uh, people who are lowballing the market potentially, uh, whether Amazon is a seller or anything along those lines. The, the important part with the custom strategies is this is purely looking at a position. So as the market goes up and down, the software will follow it up and down. Uh, so if someone sold out from underneath you, the next lowest price is 50 cents higher, the software is going to pull you up and so you can sell to what the market value is. The alternative to that is we have a buy box strategy. Buy box strategies are especially helpful when dealing with FBA. And what's happening in here instead is we're not looking at the entire scope of all the sellers on the market. We're specifically targeting the person who's going to be occupying that buy box at that moment in time. So if you're at FBA, oftentimes you'll be able to get a higher price point. We'll ignore the people that may be below you. You can specifically target for the buy box. If you have it, the software will leave you alone. If you don't have it, um, it'll target that single seller. You can undercut by dollar amounts or percentages. You can match. And you can also set the limit on how far it'll go down. So let's say you're undercutting by 5% and 5% is $20. You could limit that and make sure that's not going to happen. So both these strategies can be very useful in making sure you're targeting additional sales. It's all a matter of manipulating the market to your advantage, you know, being in the position as frequently as you can while making sure that you're maintaining your margins. Beyond the pricing engine, we start getting down into the markets that we want to list upon. So the primary market, of course, is going to be Amazon. Generally repre represents somewhere to the tune of 70% of the market. You'll notice that we have international Amazon markets in here as well. Um, we have France and Germany already enabled. Uh, Canada and the UK can also be added to the mix. And as I define my market, I can choose what I want to list to the market, and I can set rules around how that's going to be accommodated. I can set specific notes. I can um, you know, affix free shipping overrides as an example with general merchandise. I can designate fulfilled by Amazon details. Let's talk about that a little bit. So within FBA, you know, obviously there's different ways you can manage FBA. Uh, you could print your own labels. You could be in a sticker list model. You could have Amazon print the labels. So you can tell the software whether or not you want it to allow the printing of labels. You could set different users can override each other's shipments or they can be locked out. So there's different things that we can do, including setting different shipment origins. So some people will even have their suppliers shipped through direct to Amazon. And this will allow us to accommodate that while making sure that you're sending items to the proper warehouse um, as designated by Amazon. So that's essentially setting up Amazon. eBay is a little bit more sophisticated, so let's go ahead and look at that a little bit. What happens within eBay is number one, you can use your price on Amazon as your baseline and you can inflate it, or in specific cases, as long as you have UPCs and your, your competitors on eBay are also uploading UPCs, we do have the ability to get prices from eBay as well. More importantly with eBay is determining what's going to list and how your listings are going to look on that specific market. So we can designate specific rules, what will list, what will not list to the market. You'll see here, much like we had with the pricing engine, I can use the attributes around my individual items to determine whether it's going to go to eBay. Many sellers contend with insertion fees, so this is a way to make sure that you don't overindulge and get hit with insertion fees that are beyond your, uh, your comfort zone. Once we have our rules set, I can maximize my number of items within each group or overall that I'm willing to let go to eBay. And then we can simply apply items to lifting temp listing templates. And the listing templates is going to be what my page design looks like. You'll notice that we have some HTML embedded within the software. And we can do a preview of what an item is going to look like. So we'll take that HTML or JavaScript, whatever you've used, to create your eBay listing. We will attach the items, the, the item details, including eBay item specifics. Those can be inserted into the template, and then we'll push that item up and we'll create that listing on eBay automatically for you. So at this point, what we've done, assuming I do have Amazon and eBay enabled, is I'll have the same quantity of my items listed upon both markets. Uh, 
The one caveat to that is if you do have items where you're deep in inventory, as an example, let's say I've got a widget where I've got 150 items in stock. On Amazon, that's fine. Uh, with eBay, you may be running up against listing limits as well, though, so you can um, put maximum limits of how many individual items within a SKU are pushed up to eBay to make sure you're not bumping up against your listing limit. There's other markets that we can enable as well, including Rakuten and some more media-based markets, but obviously eBay and Amazon are going to be the primary two. Once I've got my markets enabled and I've got my pricing engine structured, I can simply now go in and I can start managing my inventory. Okay, in terms of bringing inventory into the software, there's a couple of ways that this can happen. We have an inventory receiving screen, and we can also import inventory either manually or on an automatic system through our data exchange. Cases where you might be using the receiving screen would be more akin to people who are, um, have physical product coming to their warehouses. They don't actually have data to work with, they just have physical product. This would be an example where you may go in and you'd be physically scanning products into the system. In this case, I'm putting in an ISBN number and I can pull up an item where the software will pull the information from Amazon and I'm now ready to receive that item into inventory. You'll see the monsoon is gonna attach a specific SKU to the item. I can alter conditions, I can affix a locator code, a lot of different functions I can add in here. Uh, most importantly though, the information, like I said, will come from Amazon and the system is automatically going to determine your price dependent upon the pricing strategies that we had already set. So in this case, I accept the item into inventory. Maybe my location code will just put like A1 as a shelf designation. I accept it and that is now scanned and it's been brought into the software. As items have been brought in, you can go into my inventory tab and you can see all your inventory from in here. We can sort it by categories, so you can do searches. You can also do browsing. And within the browsing, I can look up items by specific filters. So if you want to see specific products or groups of products to see how things are operating, apply whatever filter you'd like to, um, you'd like to designate. The system will pull those items up and now that allows us to either edit those items individually or I can edit all and I can make group changes to my product. So let's go ahead and we're going to look up a specific product and then we can start working with that a little bit. So let's go ahead into home as an example here and I may look up a specific product. So let's go ahead and look up an item here. We're going to look up an ASIN that I've already added into the system. So I do a lookup and you can see now that I've already got this item in the system so perhaps I had imported it and I have 150 items in stock. Um, again, my prices are already predetermined. I can see the low price on the market. I can see the sales rank on Amazon. So a lot of key information is being presented to me from this screen. Now these are items are active. Now you can see that I'm in local inventory since I have you know, local, local location code set. I can also go to my shipping options and I can designate an item that I want to submit my products to fulfill by Amazon. So the way that we do this is I can say I want to send it to FBA. You'll see here it shows me that I've got a quantity of 150 in stock and I can designate how many I want to add to the mix. So in this case, I'm just going to say I'm going to put in 50. We had to predetermine these things. I'm not live, so I'm kind of mocking up a little bit of an FBA shipment. But what's going to show here is it's going to deduct those items from local quantity. It's going to designate those into FBA and it's figuring out which warehouses those items are going to go to based upon those quantities. These are determined by Amazon. So you do not generally have control over which warehouses they want you to ship it to. Um, Monsoon's communicating with Amazon to make sure that you are doing that properly. So from this point, I can simply accept and print. As long as I am affixing labels to a, my, my product here, it's gonna print off my stickers. Let's go ahead and cancel those items out because I don't need to print 110 stickers out. <laughs> but now I've got those items designated. I can add those stickers to my products, put those in the specific piles, and now I can continue building my FBA shipments. What's going to happen throughout this process is since I'm creating these items into FBA, these items are now going to go into an FBA working quantity. So items will be removed from local inventory and they're going to be put into an FBA working quantity. Simply just means that those items are no longer going to be listed while they're in transit. As soon as Amazon receives those shipments, those things become active. So I can actually have local quantity and FBA quantities um, live on the market at the same time. As those orders come through, we now go into the order screen. We're going to have all of our different items up on the various markets, and so we're going to pull those orders from whatever channels you have active. Within that process, I can see whether items are local, I can see whether they're fulfilled by Amazon, expedited international, anything to that effect. I can sort orders by market. I can also sort them by status. 
So in this particular case, I'm looking at all my new orders. You see I've got orders coming from a variety of different markets. And if I'm doing fulfilled by Amazon, I can technically even have Monsoon fulfill orders on other markets through the multi-channel manager on Amazon as well. So my orders are going to be here within the system. I can now either export my order data into an, another system. Common use there would be maybe uh, submitting those into our order management system, our sister product. Or I can handle these orders directly from within the software itself. I can select multiple orders at one time. I can deal with orders individually. I can print my orders right here, in which case it is going to choose a uh, packing slip and it'll print those off by order of location code. So I can use that as my pick pack. And then I can have a variety of ways I can ship it out the door. Uh, Monsoon is set to integrate with Indicia. Uh, some people will print through the UPS or the FedEx software. Uh, just check with your sales representative and they can help you figuring out the, the best shipping methods that you have. Essentially what's gonna happen in here is as these orders are being brought in from the markets, those items are automatically gonna be uh, decremented from the different channels. So if I have five items listed on Amazon and eBay as an example, if I sell one on Amazon, uh, I'll now have four listed on both Amazon and on eBay. As orders are completed, uh, Monsoon will pull the tracking information from the shipping system that you've selected. It'll assign the carrier code, and all that information is now in the system, and we'll be confirming those orders and sending emails out to customers when it's appropriate. So you don't have any communication specific with the market, you can just let the software do its trick. And that's essentially most of what the Monsoon Marketplace software is about. Again, there's a lot more detail that we can go through. If you'd like to learn a little bit more, please contact your sales representative with Monsoon and we'd be happy to schedule a more advanced demonstration. Hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you.